Then Holofernes' companions and all his servants came out and led her into the tent. Holofernes was resting in his bed under a canopy which was woven with purple and gold and emeralds and precious stones. When they told him of her, he came forward to the front of the tent with silver lamps carried before him. And when Judith came into the presence of Holofernes and his servants, they all marveled at the beauty of her face, and she prostrated herself and made obeisance to him, and his slaves raised her up. Then Holofernes said to her, Take courage, woman, and do not be afraid in your heart, for I have never hurt anyone who chose to serve Nebuchadnezzar, the king of all the earth. And even now, if your people who live in the hill country had not slighted me, I would never have lifted my spear against them. But they have brought all this on themselves. And now tell me why you have fled from them and have come over to us, since you have come to safety. Have courage. You will live tonight and from now on. No one will hurt you, but all will treat you well, as they do to the servants of my lord King Nebuchadnezzar. Judith replied to him, Accept the words of your servant, and let your maidservant speak in your presence, and I will tell nothing false to my lord this night. And if you follow out the words of your maidservant, God will accomplish something through you, and my lord will not fail to achieve his purposes. Nebuchadnezzar, the king of the whole earth, lives, and as his power endures, who had sent you to direct every living soul, not only do men serve him because of you, but also the beasts of the field and the cattle and the birds of the air will live by your power under Nebuchadnezzar and all his house. For we have heard of your wisdom and skill, and it is reported throughout the whole world that you are the one good man in the whole kingdom, thoroughly informed and marvelous in military strategy. Now as for the things Achior said in your council, we have heard his words, for the men of Bethulia spared him, and he told them all he had said to you. Therefore, my lord and master, do not disregard what he said, but keep it in your mind, for it is true. Our nation cannot be punished, nor can the sword prevail against them, unless they sin against their god. And now in order that my lord may not be defeated and his purpose frustrated, death will fall upon them, for a sin has overtaken them, by which they are about to provoke their god to anger, when they do what is wrong. Since their food supply is exhausted, and their water has almost given out, they have planned to kill their cattle and have determined to use all that God by his laws has forbidden them to eat. They have decided to consume the first fruits of the grain and the tithes of the wine and oil, which they had consecrated and set aside for the priests who minister in the presence of our God at Jerusalem, although that is not lawful for any of the people so much as to touch these things with their hands. They have sent men to Jerusalem because even the people living there have been doing this, to bring back to them permission from the Senate. When the word reaches them, and they proceed to do this, on that day they will be handed over to you to be destroyed. Therefore, when I, your servant, learned all this, I fled from them, and God has sent me to accomplish with you things that will astonish the whole world, as many as shall hear about them. For your servant is religious, and serves the God of heaven day and night. Therefore, my Lord, I will remain with you, and every night your servant will go out into the valley, and I will pray to God, and he will tell me when they have committed their sins." And I will come and tell you, and then you shall go out with your whole army, and not one of them will withstand you. Then I will lead you through the middle of Judea, till you come to Jerusalem, and I will set your throne in the midst of it. And you will lead them like sheep that have no shepherd, and not a dog will so much as open its mouth to growl at you. For this has been told me, by my foreknowledge, it was announced to me, and I was sent to tell you. Her words pleased Holofernes and all his servants. And they marveled at her wisdom and said, There is not such a woman from one end of the earth to the other, either for beauty of face or wisdom of speech. And Holofernes said to her, God has done well to send you before the people, to lend strength to our hands, and to bring destruction upon those who have slighted my Lord. You are not only beautiful in appearance, but wise in speech. And if you do as you have said, your God shall be my God, and you shall live in the house of King Nebuchadnezzar, and be renowned throughout the whole world. Then he commanded them to bring her in where his silver dishes were kept, and ordered them to set a table for her with some of his own food and to serve her with his own wine. But Judas said, I cannot eat it, lest it be an offense, but I will be provided from the things I have brought with me. Holofernes said to her, If your supply runs out, where can we get more like it for you? For none of your people is here with us. Judith replied, As your soul lives, my lord, your servant will not use up the things I have with me before the Lord carries out my hand what he has determined to do. Then the servants of Holofernes brought her into the tent, and she slept until midnight. Along toward the morning watch, she arose and sent to Holofernes, and said, 
Let my lord now command that your servant be permitted to go out and pray. So Holofernes commanded his guards not to hinder her. And she remained in the camp for three days, and went out each night to the valley of Bethulia, and bathed at the spring in the camp. When she came up from the spring, she prayed the Lord God of Israel to direct her way for the raising up of her people. So she returned clean and stayed in the tent until she ate her food toward evening. On the fourth day, Holofernes held a banquet for his slaves only, and did not invite any of his officers. And he said to Bagoas, the eunuch, who had charge of all his personal affairs, Go now and persuade the Hebrew woman, who is in your care, to join us and eat and drink with us. For it will be a disgrace if we let such a woman go without enjoying her company. For if we do not embrace her, she will laugh at us. So Bagoas went out from the presence of Holofernes and approached her and said, This beautiful maidservant will please come to my lord and be honored in his presence, and drink wine and be merry with us, and become today like one of the daughters of the Assyrians, who serve in the house of Nebuchadnezzar. And Judas said, who am I to refuse my Lord? Surely whatever pleases him I will do at once, and it will be a joy to me until the day of my death. So she got up and arrayed herself in all her woman's finery, and her maid went and spread on the ground for her before Holofernes the soft fleeces which she had received from Bagoas for her daily use, so that she might recline on them when she ate. Then Judith came in and lay down, and Holofernes' heart was ravished with her, and he was moved with great desire to possess her, for he had been waiting for an opportunity to deceive her, ever since the day he first saw her. So Holofernes said to her, Drink now, and be merry with us. Judith said, I will drink now, my lord, because my life means more to me today than in all the days since I was born. Then she took and ate and drank before him what her maid had prepared. And Holofernes was greatly pleased with her, and drank a great quantity of wine, much more than he had ever drunk in any one day since he was born. These are also proverbs of Solomon which the men of Hezekiah king of Judah copied. It is the glory of God to conceal things, but the glory of kings is to search things out. As the heavens for height, and the earth for depth, so the mind of kings is unsearchable. Take away the dross from the silver, and the smith has material for a vessel. Take away the wicked from the presence of the king, and his throne will be established in righteousness. Do not put yourself forward in the king's presence, or stand in the place of the great. For it is better to be told, come up here, than to be put lower in the presence of the prince. What your eyes have seen, do not hastily bring into court. For what will you do in the end when your neighbor puts you to shame? Argue your case with your neighbor himself, and do not disclose another secret. Lest he who hears you bring shame upon you, and your ill repute have no end. A word fitly spoken is like apples of gold in a setting of silver. Like a gold ring or an ornament of gold is a wise reprover to a listening ear. Like the cold of snow in the time of harvest is a faithful messenger to those who send him. He refreshes the spirit of his masters. Like clouds and wind without rain is a man who boasts of a gift he does not give. What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died in sin still live in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried therefore with him by baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our former man was crucified with him, so that the sinful body might be destroyed, and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For he who has died is freed from sin, but if we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. For we know that Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin, once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal bodies to make you obey their passions. Do not yield your members to sin as instruments of wickedness but yield yourselves to God as men who have been brought from death to life, and your members to God as instruments of righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you, since you are not under law, but under grace. What then? Are we to sin because we are not under law, but under grace? By no means. Do you not know that if you yield yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the, of the one you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness. But thanks be to God, that you, who were once slaves of sin, 
have become obedient from the heart to the standard of teaching to which you were committed, and having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. I am speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations, for just as you once yielded your members to impurity and to great and greater iniquity, so now yield your members to righteousness for sanctification. When you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness, but then what return did you get from the things of which you are now ashamed? The end of those things is death. But now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves of God, the return you get is sanctification and its end, eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Do you not know, brethren, for I am speaking to those who know the law, that the law is binding on a person only during his life? Thus a married woman is bound by law to her husband as long as he lives. But if her husband dies, she is discharged from the law concerning the husband. Accordingly, she will be called an adulteress if she lives with another man while her husband is alive. But if her husband dies, she is free from that law, and if she marries another man, she is not an adulteress. Likewise, my brethren, you have died to the law through the body of Christ, so that you may belong to another, to him who has been raised from the dead, in order that we may bear fruit of God. While we were living in the flesh, our sinful passions, aroused by the law, were at work in our members to bear fruit for death. But now we are discharged from the law, dead to that which held us captive, so that we serve not under the old written code, but in the new life of the Spirit. What then shall we say? That the law is sin? By no means. Yet if it had not been for the law, I should not have known sin. I should not have known what it is to covet if the law had not said, You shall not covet. But sin, finding opportunity in the commandment, wrought in me all kinds of covetousness. Apart from the law, sin lies dead. I was once alive apart from the law, but when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. The very commandment which promised life proved to be death to me. For sin, finding opportunity in the commandment, deceived me, and by it killed me. So the law is holy, and the commandment is holy, and just, and good. St. Paul calls us, challenges us, to walk in newness of life. What is impossible for the unbeliever and those under the old covenant is now possible for us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus. Holofernes' lust of Judith is a reminder of the many sins that we are now set free from by the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. But since our fallen nature can easily tend towards sin because of concupiscence, this gift of freedom, which was won for us on the cross, demands our cooperation with God's grace. Thus St. Paul urges us, do not yield to sin, do not return to being slaves to sin, but rather be obedient from the heart and yield to righteousness. The good news is that because of our baptism, we now belong to another, to our Lord, and he will provide all we need in our struggle. Just as Judith will overcome the wicked Holofernes, we can overcome the allurements of sin and walk in newness of life in Christ. What can you do today to become more obedient from the heart?